Good afternoon and welcome to CEC Gurukul lecture. In the series on sociology of India, in today's lecture we are going to discuss on the study of family in India. When we try to understand family as an institution in India, a couple of things comes to our mind. First is to understand the evolutionary theory that proposed that with modernization, with shift from industrialization, shift from a gradient to industrial society, the joint family disintegrated and gave way to the nuclear family. Now, this it's kind of something which is debatable whether the joint family di di uh, disintegrated or whether the, there was no kind of a jointness which is being referred in the social science literature. Another uh, debate which is very central to understand the change and transformation in family was to understand this distinction between household and family because the idea was that household was the actual residential unit, the actual uh, 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 residence in which the kin uh, resided and the family was only a genealogical construct. So, there much of the debates in the say uh, later part of the 19th century uh, shifted to understand the change in family by looking into the size and composition of household. Now, when we look into the idea of the study of family in India, here we are referring to Patricia Obroy's work, Family, Marriage and Kinship, in which he is trying to talk about the family in uh, the ways in which sociologists and other social sciences have taken up the study of family. According to Patricia Obroy, the study of the changes and transformation in the institution of family has faced major problems. Number one, a lack of uniform operational definition of the concept join or extended. There are several ways in which the concept of jointness has been explained and therefore the other concept like nuclear, conjugal, elementary, in many literature they are used synonymously but many other literature kind of makes a distinction. So, there is no consensus in terms of under, uh, arriving at a definition of what is joint or what is uh, nuclear. The second problem is the idea that family and household was considered to be more or less synonymous and there was a need to uh, kind of make a difference between the two. It led to uncertainty of answering the central question, is the joint family disintegrating? Now, when we try to do a review of the study of family in India, the first name that comes to our mind is A.M. Shah. In his work, The Family in India and the Household Dimension of Family in India, A.M. Shah differentiated between a sociological approach and a legal or an indological approach to the study of family. The distinction had two aspects. Number one, the study of family should be empirical and it should be based on the observation of kinship behavior. Now, he was kind of making reference to M. N. Srinivas' concept of the field view versus the book view. Now, A. M. Shah argued that the sociological study should be field view. view. Uh, field view meant based on empirical observation of the kinship behavior, whereas the indological approach were more book view. They were kind of only referring to religious texts or were talking to certain uh, category of uh, people and arriving at certain generalization. The second uh, issue that A.M. Shah raised was the object of study should be the household dimension of the family and the household was defined as a commensal and co-residential group. According to A.M. Shah, the study of the household did not lay emphasis on co-partnership and ritual corporateness. These two features, the uh, co-partnership that is the joint property by all male members by virtue of birth and ritual corporateness that it was a, a, a corporate which could be uh, stay together for ritual purpose the, was used in the traditional definition of the Hindu joint family. Now, this is replaced by the term household and changes the question in terms of whether there has been a change in size and composition or whether there is a disintegration of the joint family. A.M. Shah argued for the meticulous attention to methodology, judicious use of data source and conscious use of generalization. This would enable sociologists to monitor longitudinal trends. So, he was kind of very careful 
that if we use the criteria of corporate, if we use the criteria of re, uh, relig religious unity and uh, joint property, we are referring more to a legal approach of family, which was very close to what, what the idea of the property uh, division in the undivided Hindu family. Now, if we were to look into a sociological approach, then we have to do more ground empirical research and uh, kind of do a comparison across the longitude over space and time. Another sociologist which comes into understanding the, the relevance of the distinction between household and family was Pauline Kalender. Several household classification schemes were devised by the sociologist to capture the multiple form of household composition and the dynamic of household change in India. A 12 type classificatory scheme was proposed by Pauline Kalender in her work Region, Caste and Family Structure, a Comparative Study of Indian Joint Family. And this work was based on analysis of 26 uh, studies, ethnographic study, which was carried out post-1949. And uh, it was making reference to a lot of household census data that was being uh, collected by the government. It clearly... It, uh, it clears the confusion created by the dichotomous classification of household into either joint, extended or nuclear elementary. So, these binaries were actually only at a theoretical level. These were not working if we were go to look into an empirical way in which the practice and relationship among members were being uh, practiced. So, the pattern of household change, uh, uh, composition and change, a number of observations can be made on the various studies of the household composition and change. According to Patricia O'Broy, these studies are often based on existing stereotypes and destructive rather than positive in remapping the field. So, when we follow the binaries and we kind of uh, blindly uh, apply it to the understanding of uh, family in India, it can become very negative. So, some of the observation that Patricia O'Broy points out in terms of the household composition and change are, number one, the joint household is rarely the statistically predominant form of household. So, it, uh, the argument that she is trying to make is that uh, through data collected through a number of studies, empirical studies, uh, it was never found that joint family was kind of uh, uh, the most pr uh, predominant. Nuclear households were more in number. However, the majority of people still resides in joint or supplanted nuclear family. That is, that you uh, the inability of the data to capture the existence of the pattern because of the variance in the residence pattern of people. Number two, the proportion of joint over nuclear household does not appear to be decreasing. Uh, number three, despite the predominance of nuclear household, Many or most people would experience living in several different types of household. So, it kind of is difficult especially in uh, to uh, arrive at an understanding that uh, a, a very uh, one sort understanding that uh, as people migrated from rural to urban, uh, joint family declined and nuclear family. There is no statistical evidence to show the predominance of nuclear household. Number four, a stem family form that is the uh, parents residing with one of the child is emergent pattern of the uh, of family organization. And this form is kind of emerging in industrial modern society with a lot of civil society work on elderly and the, uh, the idea of care, the family as provider of care to the elderly people, the idea of stem family is emerging. I, earlier, it was kind of put into the extended family or in, in terms of the generation. So, if the male member was residing with the child, it was an extension of the line of descent. But if a female were, or the mother was residing then it, or a sister was residing, then it was considered as a, a supplementary or a extended family. So, these uh, confusions is there in terms of uh, the how do you kind of categorize 
a number of different types of household into a few categories. The fourth observation is rural household tend on an average larger than the urban household. Parallelly, joint households are more numerous in rural than urban area. However, there is a kind of a idea that it is not necessary that urbanization would need to nuclearization uh, without a, uh, without doing a longitudinal study because even in the urban areas because the cost of living is high they could be the reason to save on the expenditure in terms of rent that a number of members of this, uh, related through kin relations start staying uh, putting up in a joint uh, household so also in terms of kind of increase emphasis on collectivity they are important occasion in like family religious when the idea of jointness is still alive in the urban metropolitan uh, areas the sixth is there appear to be a regional difference in the prevalence of joint family Pauline Colander has pointed out at the dominance of joint family in northern India and weakest in South India. Now, this is also being taken in from the kinship studies. So, a lot of kinship studies like Trotman and uh, other uh, classical anthropologists had suggested a kinship divide between the north and the south. So, you have the uh, kinship pattern in north different from the uh, skinship pattern in South, specifically on the uh, way in which the members were allowed to choose their uh, marriage partner. So, this kind of distinction between the North and South in the practice of kinship and marriage got reflected in the divide between the North and the South. The seventh observation is Notwithstanding nuclear household residence, there is a strong and generally commitment to joint family values and norms of kinship behavior. So, the whole idea that India uh, presents a unique case where the you know, there is a lot of uh, emotions attached to culture, to tradition and the uh, uh, joint family is not only kind of being looked into in, tos, uh, in terms of size and composition, but it is very important to understand the ideas which are associated with it, that the people even kind of uh, are spread out, are segregated regionally, yet the uh, uh, desire to be in a joint uh, uh, residence is kindly improved. And this is seen in terms of property, ritual observation, code of conduct, especially for women, even if it is kind of uh, the gender code of conduct is reflected very, uh, even if the family is kind of uh, residing only with the uh, conjugal partner, but the norms of joint family is gets reflected. We also see the continuity of the patrilocal residence where women are supposed to kind of move to the residence of their husbands. Uh, where uh, even in the urban area. So, these practices kind of points out to the jointness and the fact that it is jointness is still celebrated. Now, by looking into the idea that there is kind of a, a, a vacuum, so the idea that uh, applying the western model or the evolutionary model to understand transition of family from joint to the nuclear is not very helpful. The second is to understand whether the distinction between household and family is relevant and it kind of uh, suggested that the use of household in place of family was a kind of positive. It enables scholarly discussion on the family in India and enable rigorous comparative studies of household across culture and time. So, it was a positive break. However, Patricia Obroy also points out to the limitation. Study of Indian joint family, it restricted to quantitative and morphological aspect of household. So, you are only trying to understand size and composition and the distinction between the household and family did not capture the a uh, qualitative dimension of family life and relationship. So, taking household as a unit of analysis leaves out the study of role of family in organization of human reproduction, socialization of citizen or in the provision of welfare. So, there was a shift of focus in Indian family and kinship studies in the late 1990s 
from structure to process. So the earlier 1970s, 60s, the focus was to understand science and composition. Later, it was in terms of understanding the power dimensions, in terms of how gender and sex were kind of look, looking into the uh, creation of this the uh, distribution of power in the family and then it was the focus was in terms of understanding uh, a kind of a re-revision of the history of family in Europe and North America and a re-engagement with the functionalist and structural functional approach uh, which was used in sociology and anthropology going back to Talcott Parsons structural functional approach and third was to open insight from a cultural approach uh, to kinship study as a means of understanding both ideology of joint family and indigenous nature of relatedness. The fourth step to recover the family, this recover the significance of the study of family was to recognize the structural implication of marriage alliance in determining the role of family in wider kinship system. The fifth recovery of the family was to explore the political economy of the household, both the intra-household distribution and implication of wider national and global economy. Because when you look into the understanding or transformation of taking place in the family, what is it very important to understand the political economy, how the market, how the production distribution impacts the way in which resources are acquired, are distributed or consumed. So the political economy debate becomes significant. Sixth is to consider the relationship of contradiction and collusion between state, community and household. The seventh is a general openness for insight from other discipline, taking on board broad themes that have been marginalized in sociological research. And here the reference is on demography, the way in which demography has kind of uh, looked into the family as an institution. The sociologist can take some uh, uh, key findings from there and provide a, a more holistic study. Now, what is very significant to understand the contribution of some of the feminists in terms of doing away with a lot of limitations in the study of family in India. Feminist scholars have provided a bridge across the disciplinary divide. So, we have referred to the disciplinary divide between sociology and anthropology, between sociology, anthropology and social work. And the disciplinary divide is in terms of what is the objective of study or what the sociologists study and what an anthropologist study. So the feminists are doing away with this. And the objective of uh, the feminist uh, study is more interdisciplinary to kind of look into the family as an institution from multiple perspective and kind of arrive at a more holistic understanding. One of the names that comes into mind is Leela Dubey's work. Now, Leela Dubey in her work, she uses the metaphor of seed and earth. Uh, and this she uses to highlight the gender asymmetry. And this gender asymmetry is in the uh, way in which biological reproduction is conceived by the people. But this metaphor, the seed and the earth, helps us to understand how the inequality in the reproductive zone is carried on to the productive uh, field. So the divide between the reproduction and production, the binaries are also kind of done away with. So when she looks into the metaphor of seed and earth, uh, Leela Dube kind of uh, uh, explains the attitude and perceptions that people have in their uh, 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 conception of biological reproduction. So man is seen as the active principle providing the seed of the child's future identity and women are merely passive field in which the seed is sown and nurtured. So here we have a subordinate role in terms of only being a recept receiver whereas men are given a dominant position of provider. Now from reproduction the uh, idea of inequality is rationalized. And women are alienated from productive resources, has no control over her own labor and they are denied right over the offspring. So basically feminist discourse would say that within the family, the women have no entitlement. 
So, by contrasting the patrilineal society, Leela Dobie observed that in some matrilineal society, they have a kind of a more gender symmetrical way to understand procreation and women's entitlement. And therefore, the matrilineal society or the bilateral society are more gender egalitarian compared to the patrilineal society. Another feminist uh, who becomes significant in understanding the way in which family is seen from a feminist perspective is Bina Agarwal. She established a correlation between descent, uh, marriage, residence and succession to show the status of women and their bargaining power. And Bina Agarwal would say that because of the position in the uh, kinship system, because of the pattern of marriage, the entitlement of women uh, and the bargaining power is uh, uh, dis, uh, dis, uh, uh, very low in the society. Now, another way in which the uh, attempt to revive the study of family in India is to kind of refer to the cultural approach in kinship study. Now, David Schneider, in his study of family in America, critiqued the descent and alliance approach to kinship and put forward the cultural approach. He characterized kinship in terms of an opposition of relationship by blood. The blood was conceived as natural, permanent and substantive and different types of relationship by marriage governed by code of conduct and based in law or culture. So, the cultural approach of David Snyder was that kinship is kind of an abstraction of the system and to understand the kinship system, it is important to look at both the blood and code of conduct. So, Schneider's cultural approach was used by a number of uh, science, social scientists and anthropologists to understand the family in India. Inden and Nicholas, they used the cultural approach and looked at the principle of classification of relatives in the culture of Bengali kinship. In the Bengali kinship, according to Inden and Nicholas, the kinship terminology determines the code of conduct especially with reference to the Hindu rites uh, of passage or samskaras and these responsibility or the way the individuals are uh, attached to the responsibility as transition from birth to death is significant and can be understood with reference to the uh, kinship terminology. Margaret Trowick has also used the cultural approach and her study was in to look into the meaning of love in culture of Tamil kinship. Again, when we look into social science literature, there was a kind of a dichotomy or binary between in terms of understanding love and love in the Western society was defined in terms of erotic relationship, whereas in the Eastern it was considered as non-erotic. Margaret Travick moves against this binary and tries to understand the meaning of love being constructed in terms of uh, multiple and contradictory attributes of containment, habit, harshness, dirtiness, humility, simplicity, servitudes and reversal of normal social hierarchy. Another relevant work in terms of uh, the application of cultural approach is Veena Das on the Punjabi kinship system. And uh, Veena Das in her work acknowledges the strong emotional bond emerging from natural conjugal relation and the natural procreative relation between the parents. But she makes a difference between the front stage and the back stage. And she argues that what is natural or what is kind of coming in from the biological domain is something which is restricted by the society and put in the back stage. And we wear a mask and we kind of show to the world the code of conduct. And that is where she could kind of give an explanation of why uh, a man who has uh, kind of given birth to a daughter has kind of helped in her nurturing and socialization is yet able to take her life or kill her on the count of honor killing. So, the code of conduct becomes what is shown to the world. Biology and nature is in the backstage. So, this cultural approach, the joint family is defined not in the types of household formation, 
but as an ideology and the code of conduct regulates the relationship between different members of the society so when we look into the uh, uh, discussion by uh, uh, patricia obroy she kind of gives some suggestions for new direction in the study of family and this is to kind of look into the changing pattern of household formation composition and dispersion at the same time we have to study family life relationship and wide range of functions that household family still continues to perform but it is not to accept the functional unit but to look into the pathology and dysfunction as well and to do away with equating joint family with hindu patrilineal family otherwise how do we study non hindu and tribal communities so she is making a lot of suggestions and suggesting new direction in the study of family in india and gives kind of a very holistic comprehensive way of looking into the qualitative study the political economy looking into the relation between state and family and a gender dimension of the family with this i come to an end of today's lecture thank you